Hi everybody, Rob here from Prior Studios, and in this video I'm going to show you how to kind of avoid getting caught in the trap of feeling like you have to polygon model everything or you have to use splines and just mix up the different methods so you become really efficient. And I'm hoping within, you know, five or so minutes we'll have a really cool chair model built. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to turn on snapping and I'm just going to make sure that work plane snap is turned on. And we're going to start off using the pen tool. I'm going to go into a front view. Let's just maximize this so you can see it. Uh, and I will just drag down so you can see pretty much what's going on here. And let's start drawing our shape. So I'm going to come down to here and here. Now at this point, I think that one's just out a little bit actually. Let's just push that in. Hmm, interesting. My snapping doesn't appear to be on. Oh, it is. Just my eyes that aren't in. Okay, so I'm going to take that point and this point here. Let's just move back up. Uh, and I'm going to right click. Let's go to chamfer. And I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm going to drag out uh, a, just a radius here on this. Uh, you could type this in manually if you wanted to. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that, that's fine. Um, I'm also just going to select all the points by pressing Control A, right click, and create outline. So I'm just gonna drag in the viewport here to give this some thickness. I'm happy with that, that looks fine. Now, what I do want to do is just fix this point. If I zoom in, you can see that that's not touching the floor and the one on the other side won't be either. And by dragging them down, I'll also introduce a bit of a taper to the um, the legs, which is a good thing. That's what I want. So I'm just going to type in here. I want them on the ground plane. So on the Y, I can just type in zero and that's done. Now I need to give this some depth and some geometry. So I'm going to add an extrude to the scene, make that spline a child of the extrude. Uh, this is obviously way too big for what is going to be one set of legs or one pair of legs. And um, so if I choose that extrude and Let's just uh, go to object, and I don't want this to be 100 centimeters. I want this to be near probably 10, 12. Uh, let's start with start with 12, and I'll add a bit of shape to this in a second. Um, I want to make sure that this is going in the Z or the Z axis, uh, which it is now. That's fine, and we're we're getting there. So let's go to a side view. And just hit S to bring this up in your viewport. And I'm going to make this editable now. So this is going to turn it from a kind of a primitive object into actual geometry. Uh, and I will just right click and choose optimize just to make sure that all the points are welded. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a selection over here. And I'm just going to rotate this selection. out so far uh, and this is just to give it a little bit of extra shape just get rid of that selection there uh, and this is pretty much what I want it to be um, what I am going to do now is I'm going to go into polygon mode and I'm just going to loop select all the way around the front edge like so oops you know what I might do this individually I might do the front face and then the back face separately so just zoom in uh, flip yourself around to the back and I'm just gonna right click and choose uh, bevel and just click and drag I don't want a small bevel here this is fine I'm gonna give it a sub two subdivisions just so that when you zoom in you can see there's a little bit of geometry there to play with okay hit the spacebar to drop the tool click off the object to drop the selection and we're looking pretty good now one thing I do want to do is I wanted to have this a bit more angled so if we go into a side view just go into object mode or model mode and hit R for rotate Oops. and I'm going to turn snapping off now um, and I'm going to make this minus 15 degrees and I'm typing this in manually in the coordinate manager. I'm going to click on the extrude in the object manager, just click and drag to make a copy 
and if I turn on global for my position and rotation and scale and just drag a copy out hold down shift so it constrains it uh, do the same again just to drag this back I'm also going to make this one just a bit smaller just a little bit uh, and I might make it match in scale down the Z again like so uh, now what you'll probably notice is that the feet now are angled so I need to grab those points just take them back to the floor plane and I'll do the same on the other one oops okay See, if I had typed in the number here and clicked them, they would all have gone to the, the zero Y point, point uh, and you wouldn't have the little curve at the bottom there. Uh, all right, so let's go back to our main view. What have we got here? We've got two good looking legs. Um, they're all cool. We've got tags here for the materials if we wanted to kind of drag these around. Um, but we need a seat. So let's add a cube and let's make this cube just kind of the basic shape we need so I'm going for a 10 by 10 segment cube here um, I'm just gonna drop it roughly into position or we can play with this in a minute afterwards um, but we need to give it some form let's just make sure it's what we want it to be uh, I think that's fine now you could make this editable and you could start moving points around um, but I'm not gonna do that um, I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to add an FFD, which is one of my favorite tools in Cinema 4D, or, or just modeling packages in general. Make it a child of the cube, and I'm going to choose here Fit to Parent, which shrinks it down to the right size. Um, I don't need three points in the Y, two is plenty. Now what you do is you come into point mode, and let's just grab these points here. And what this does is it basically uses it as a kind of a really simple cage to then change the geometry of the child object. So all I'm doing is just dragging these things down. If I go into a top view, I could grab, say, those points and those points. And if I just decrease their size on the x-axis and maybe move them back into the chair a bit on the Z axis uh, I might well just shrink down the size at the front as well just a little bit uh, that's maybe a bit too much in fact I'll do this in the main viewport um, yeah I think that's fine I might just move them back just a little just to give some form now you probably can't see what the underlying mesh is doing too easily so I'm going to come into display and just turn on lines and hopefully now that will give you a, a better indication of what's going on uh, let's take these two and just lower them even more now you could do all of this by putting this in a subdivision in fact this is what I'm going to do next is just drop all this inside a subdivision surface which gives you the extra smoothing um, I'll, let's just go to uh, the cube which is our main object and I'm just going to add a couple of edge loops around the kind of the thickness which will help me make this match the, the shape of our legs and it'll give it just a little bit of curvature over the edge so there we go that's looking pretty good let's get rid of those lines so it looks less dense and we can see what we're doing a bit more clearly so we can take the whole thing um, we could just rotate this round uh, maybe we, oops, maybe we do this in a side view might be better like so and then if we bring it up to about there reduce the whole size of it maybe like so this is looking good now we could take that thing uh, let's call this one the seat and we could make a duplicate of it, flip it round and make that into the back. But actually, 
that's not going to work for this tutorial because this tutorial is all about showing you some different ways so I'll just show you the, the, the manual way of doing this um, using a cube so we've got the cube let's stick it roughly where we know it's going to be and let's go into our object mode here let's make it about six and a half centimeters like so let's drop down the size of that quite a lot and now we just need to shrink the width a bit and I'm going to make this three segments by let's go for five and probably three on the depth and I'm going to drop that inside subdivision surface um, and now I'm going to make the cube itself editable so this is the downfall of this one it gives you kind of perfect control but it also means that you're losing that kind of primitive element of the, the object um, but it means you can come in to say polygon mode and just do a UL for loop select and then just push that whole selection back so this is a similar kind of result as you would get from the FFD um, but a little bit different in certain as aspects so I'm going to make those middle polygons a bit wider just so you get a flatter object there uh, and th there we go we're kind of most of the way there now it's obviously in a, a slightly dodgy looking position uh, let's just rename this to back now I've been explaining this as I go so it's taken a little longer than it would if I'd been just kind of whipping through it um, I need to rotate that a little bit uh, let's rotate that around like so and drop it into position and then we can take our spline tool let's zoom in a little bit and let's maybe quite as much okay add a point there right there there and let's say there and I'm going to take oops, this this point here and just curve that off and I'll do that the same way using the chamfer tool uh, just zoom in so I can see what I'm doing that's fine I'm liking that uh, I probably will jump for that too. In fact, what you can do with this one, uh, unless you want it to be a particular set radius, you can just go soft interpolation and that will smooth it out for you, uh, which is great. Okay, so let's put this one inside a sweep. So what this does is it runs that whole sweep object along here, but we need a profile. So let's take a circle, which is going to be massive. Uh, let's make this let's try two see what happens and dump that first on the sweep and then the spline path goes underneath it so it's always profiled along the path i think that circles running in the wrong direction let's just double check i think i'm right that's going to be flat so we need to change that to i think xy yeah that looks good and we have the startings of the frame or the kind of the armature uh, should have something looking it's not pretty design but you can see where we're going now I'm gonna stop here because I think this is probably enough to show you what I was trying to show you which was all about uh, having uh, different modeling techniques used to create an object now you can go on and you can start adding panels and you can start adding nuts and bolts and stuff uh, if you want um, I'm not even going to render for this video because it's very similar to uh, the chair I did in the last or I showed in the last video uh, if you want to see what it looks like then just follow that but I just wanted to show you just these kind of quick tips about how you can use different tools or different methods of, of creation um, and mix them up to do whatever makes you most efficient so hopefully that's been of some use and some interest um, I work like this all the time uh, I think the biggest one for me is the FFD uh, if you're using kind of box type polygon objects um, then using that as a, a way to uh, deform the mesh to get the curves you want but stay primitive can be really really helpful okay i'll see you all again in the next lesson thanks very much bye bye